and 1941 Dallas, Texas. Let's go back. What do you remember when you were just a little girl? Well, when I was little, we, we lived in South Dallas um, on Parker Street. And um, I don't remember a whole lot there except there was an alley. And back then there was deep segregation and the black people lived in the alley. Their houses were in the alley. And uh, when we, um, I think I was, let's see, maybe seven or eight, we moved to University Park because at that point the Jewish people were moving to Park Cities and then, then eventually they moved to Preston Hollow and Plano and Frisco and all those good places. And um, I was surprised that the alley didn't have black people living in it. Um, although our family was very, very, very um, uh, liberal and we uh, didn't believe in the segregation, but um, it was a fact at that time. Right, what did you do for fun as a little girl? Well, um, I don't remember a whole lot of, 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 in South Dallas. I do. Um, I do remember one thing that wasn't fun when I had my tonsils out and um, we went to St. Paul Hospital which was on Swiss Avenue then I believe and of course they didn't have the operating rooms they have now so there were big tall windows to let in the sunlight and um, I guess they used ether to put you to sleep and my dad was in there with me and they put this mask on my face and he said look at the bunny and that was it. I remember that. And then I remember two times were so different in the 40s. When my um, younger brother was born, he was born at Florence Nightingale Hospital, which is, was part of Baylor, is part of Baylor now. And my dad went to see my mother, and he left me in the lobby by myself with a bag of candy corn. I've always loved candy corn ever since. And today, my God, you wouldn't even leave a child to walk across the room. Right. But back then you could. How old were you when the tonsils came out? Oh, I must have been uh, four. Okay. And then how old were you when you guys moved up north? And I was about seven. Okay. And I do remember we used to um, play outside a lot. We ride our bikes. We flew kites. We uh, laid out on the grass in the summer and watched the stars and caught fireflies, things the kids don't get to do today. Now, were you the oldest of the yes. three kids? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you had two younger brothers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What did your dad do for a living? My dad was a grocer. He worked, um, he managed a grocery store for my uncle who um, had grocery stores in um, um, South Dallas and Oak Cliff. Mm -hmm. and what about your grandparents? Do you remember them at all? I do. Uh, well, my mother's father died when I was a little girl. He had a stroke and he um, was young. He was 65, I believe. Uh, his wife, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, Fanny Einhorn, lived with us. She lived with us part of the time and with my aunt, so I shared a bedroom with her. Um, and she snored terribly. <laughs> it just used to irritate me. And now I understand because yeah. we all do as we get older. Um, my um, father's parents, uh, Sarah and Archie Goodman, well, let me go back. My grandfather had a grocery store in South Dallas, mm -hmm. and it was in the front of the house. And it seems like our family was always related to food somehow. Uh, my father's parents, um, Sarah and Archie Goodman, came over, and Bubby Sarah was born in Dallas, and in St. Louis, and then moved to Dallas as a young child. Sadie Archie came over on the boat through Galveston, and I think that was during the time of the Galveston project, where they were routing the Jews through Galveston instead of New York. And he came with his um, younger sister, Frances, and his brother, um, I believe it was his brother, Simon. And Simon Goodman is the one who uh, started Goodman Produce. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Frances was married to Jake Goldman, who um, 
was a baker. So we were all in food. Uh, Sadie Archie had a truck and he um, put fruit on it and he would go down on Swiss Avenue. I have a beautiful picture of him standing by this truck and sell produce to the, to the people there. Uh, my grandmother was ashamed of that picture, but I have it hanging in my hall now. Well, why did it bother her? Because I think she was a bit of a reverse snob. Oh, where, where did your grandparents come from when you say they came through Galveston? Where, where did they come from originally? He came from Russia through Germany. Um, my mother's parents came from Russia. My grandfather was from Lithuania. My grandmother right. was from um, Russia, Odessa. And she came with her mother, two women. She was 15 years old. Yeah. I mean, what strength that shows. And they came down to um, Constantinople, which is now Istanbul. And the story is they were shopping in a um, uh, clothing store or a store, some kind of store, and they met um, my Aunt Lillian, who was my grandfather's sister, and she introduced them. And he came on the boat with them, and they wanted to get married. But my grandmother said, no, you're too young, you're only 15, you can get married when you're 16. <laughs> <laughs> so they married over here. What uh, year was this, do you, you know? They came, I believe, in 1905. Okay. All of them, around 05, 06. I have um, my father's um, gr father's uh, boat uh, ticket, and I think it was 1905. Did they ever talk about what that trip was like? No. The only thing they told me, Baby Fanny would say everybody was sick but her. Everybody was seasick and throwing up, and she was not. And then she was proud of it. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you were born, you were born right before Pearl Harbor. Did World War II affect your family at all? Well, it's interesting. I only had one uncle who went to fight. There was such an effort for that war that everyone pulled together, and they didn't care. They had their food stamps or whatever, their ration books, and they lived with it. They didn't complain. They didn't badmouth the country. Um, so I guess my family made it through somehow. They, the, the sadness in my life is they talked about it very little. I had one uncle who would say the sugar was rationed and you could only put one teaspoon of sugar in your coffee and you had to stir like hell. <laughs> <laughs> high school. Where'd you go to high school? Highland Park High School. And what was high school life like for you? Well, it was interesting. Um, I, I didn't... Um, I felt part of it. I was on the school newspaper. The interesting part is I guess time is the leveler because the girls in my class, 55 years later, we get together for lunch and, and I'm much closer to them now than I was then. Um, I was young but I was dating uh, the man I was to marry and he was in college and I guess I was apart from it somehow in that. Um, I think it's, there was still a little anti-Semitism around. Um, they used to say the reason none of the Jewish kids got in the honor society was because the Latin teacher was the sponsor and she was anti-Semitic. Um, hmm. and, and, and it could be true, but I, I didn't find any overt anti-Semitism. I enjoyed high school. I probably was the only person who did. <laughs> After high school now, was it on to college or did you go to work? I went to SMU for one year and then I married and we went down to College Station and I worked and um, um, essentially put him through his last two years of school. Okay, and this was Fred? Yes. And that marriage lasted 28 years. Right. But you started a business together. We did. Um, we bought an existing air conditioning company and we named it Con Air Conditioning and Heating and now we have a DBA con mechanical contractors and it feels very good to be in business for 40 years. Well, tell me about being a, a female business owner. What was it like for you? And we have a, a minority status because we do a lot of government work and we have for many years but I have never felt like a woman in business. I just was 
trying to make my way. And I was president of the Dallas Air Conditioning Contractors twice in 1985 and again in 2005. So um, I never, I never let myself feel less because I was a woman. Right, it was right. just hard being in the air conditioning business. Have you been involved with the Jewish community? I have. Um, somewhat. I was active. I, I belonged to every organization. And when my kids were in Sunday school, um, I, I actually taught a Jewish cooking class at Temple Emmanuel. And we made uh, matzo balls and we made uh, uh, Hamantashen and with the little kids, I had a lot more patience in than I do now. And um, I was uh, active in Hadassah uh, and of course all my friends and I go and do with them. But now mostly I, I am supportive in a financial way. I guess you get older sometimes it's too much. Um, I do drive Meals on Wheels. That's not a Jewish organization, but it's a good one. Yeah. Tell me about some of your philanthropic work. So that came from my mother. My mother didn't um, have a lot materially, but what she had, she would give. I learned to be giving from her, giving and loving. And um, I have a, um, some things set up with the Greater Dallas Jewish Foundation. And um, I've, oh, I've been active and uh, very active for a time in Dallas Hebrew Free Loan. I was president for a couple of years and um, I'm very supportive of them. I have set up a, um, an ongoing endowment for Hebrew Free Loan. Your marriage to Fred ended after 28 years and then you're married now to uh, Denny. Yes. You guys have a huge extended family, you know, between <laughs> the two of you. Everybody get along? They do. Happiest time in your life? Happiest? Um, I think probably now. I feel very at peace. I feel like um, I've accomplished most of the things I wanted to. And um, I'm free to travel and go where I want, do what I want. And um, I feel very blessed. What was your favorite music when you were a kid? Oh, Elvis Presley. <laughs> what else? <laughs> What do you think about the music today that the kids listen to? I, I, I don't hear well enough to understand it, and it all sounds the same, and it sounds awful to me. <laughs> you miss Elvis, huh? Yes. Yeah. Now, in your lifetime, you've lived through so many momentous occasions. President Kennedy assassination here in Dallas, the moon landing in 1969, something good. Of course, the whole Vietnam era, tragedy of 9-11. Was there something that came along that you knew exactly where you were when it happened and it affected you? Well, probably all of those things. Um, when President Kennedy was assassinated, we lived in Connecticut. And um, Fred was in New York on business. And everybody there knew we were from Texas. And they used to tease us about bragging a bit too much, you know, Texas braggarts and all of that. And I was, um, my daughter was a baby. She was crawling around on the floor. The vacuum cleaner was out. My hair was in rollers and I was cleaning the apartment. And there was a knock at the door. And I went to the door and it was a young man who was a neighbor. He was a real estate agent. And he stood there and he said, well, what do you think of your city now? And I said, what are you talking about? And he had been in the grocery store when this happened. And we sat all afternoon with the hair and the rollers and everything and watched. And I was able to tell him, I said, either that shot came from the school book depository or the post office, which was across the plaza. And we watched and we watched and we watched until Fred came home. It was just a, a tragedy. And it was sad to live up there at that time because uh, Connecticut is so close to Massachusetts. And people were very, very bitter about it. Now, what was Fred doing for work in Connecticut? He worked for his father at that time. Uh, they, uh, Guardian Power Cleaning, they cleaned duct work mm -hmm. in buildings. And he was actually looking at some work at the Empire State Building. Um, in fact, I mean, I'm in the basement of the first State Building before I ever went to the top of it. And I remember uh, in 69 when they landed on the moon because we had just bought our home and we were sitting in the living room just glued to the television. It was yeah. so exciting. What brought you back to Texas? Well, um, at that time, uh, Fred 
was a graduate mechanical engineer and in um, about 69 was when he decided to leave Guardian and he went to work for York selling uh, large equipment and in 74 the economy got so poor that uh, they wanted to transfer him to Pennsylvania or to Boston and he asked to go to Dallas they sent us to Dallas ten months later they wanted to send us away again and that's when uh, we uh, went into the air conditioning business. How, how was that? Was it a very scary time to try to start a business then? Well, looking back, it was a little stupid to go in the air conditioning business in October. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we did, and um, at that time we did do residential work. And the funny thing is, um, my cousin's husband, Melvin Aronoff, owned Brandt Engineering at the time, and Fred went to seek his advice and Melvin said don't do it and we thought he didn't want competition but I want to tell you it was almost 30 years before we were able to give them any competition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now where did you meet Danny? Um, he worked for us yeah. and he actually came to work for the company um, when we started. Oh so you've known him a long time? I've known him 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Well thanks for doing this today. Well it was wonderful and it was fun and I thank you for doing yeah. it. Yeah.